welcome you to another episode of Pens in Use. This week, I'm just going to show you a couple of the pens I have, and I want to show you, uh, I want to answer a question. I can't remember who asked it about uh, the Twisby um, Classic and the Twisby 580. And I'm experimenting a little with light. This, I will never light this way again, but I, I had to repair a light that I use in my photography that I'm doing some photography tomorrow and I need the light working. So, yeah, it worked and I just thought, how is it going to work with this video? So, not so well, it makes me look like something from a horror movie. But anyway, let's start by answering this question. Uh, I was asked about the Twisby 580 and the Twisby Classic as far as the uh, grip sections. So, I'm going to match up threads here. Let's zoom in, just look at the grip sections. Uh, the question was about this step right here on the Classic, and I will admit that's a steep step. I prefer the grip on the, the 580. I just kind of, it's more cone-shaped and more comfortable to me. But I also found because this is such a long grip section, that's why I lined up the threads, uh, this tapers up, it's not sharp or anything, so this doesn't bother me right here. So I hope, I'm sorry I don't remember who asked that question, but uh, I hope that answers your question anyway. Uh, both pens are very comfortable. So yes, the Twisby Classic is still in use. Let's pull back on it just a bit. Alright, so the Twisby Classic is still in use, and I will tell you a little bit about that pen. I uh, filmed my review of the Twisby Classic back in August. Uh, I don't remember exactly when, but it would have been August 20th, 20, somewhere between the 20th and the 26th uh, on a weekend. It was right before school started. And anyway, I, I filmed the video and took the pen to school and left it there. And I have not thought about the pen since until this week. Today is November 18th. I have not thought about the pen until this week when I said, huh, because I just edited the footage together. I thought, I wonder how it's doing. So I pulled it out and just was going to write a line with it, and I'll tell you what, started up like a champ. Now, I haven't read this about Twisbees, but that is something worth noting, that this pen worked just fine right away. All right, let's see what else is inked up here. Let's try a different angle, too, because I am way too far away from my pens as I do this. So I'll set this guy aside. I uh, still have... My Pilot Custom 92, this is just a good emphasis color as I'm writing notes and stuff at school. Or it sheens really nicely when I'm writing to pen pals, so yay! <laughs> Alright, I have here... Why don't you even see what the heck I'm doing here? A uh, little bit of mess over there, and uh, you know... Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, not a whole lot of mess, but a little bit. All right, so uh, let's see what else I have inked up. I have, well, last week for I did a little bonus rodeo. My P Pilot Custom, I'm sorry, this is a, not a Pilot at all. This is a Platinum 3776 Shoji. I used to not like this pen at all. I used to regret buying it, but I'll tell you what, I, I like this pen now a lot. In fact, I own a number of these pens. Uh, this is currently inked with Ottoman Azure. And I've been keeping a little ink journal, uh, mostly with the idea of finding out what pens am I actually using and which pens am I not using. So that's what I've been doing with this. And I'm going back several pages now, uh, finding out how quickly I use pens up, too. I have, and all I do is I just write down the ink, the pen, and so on. This has been inked for a while. I inked it for uh, before the rodeo, but this is, is a Pilot Custom 743. It has a falcon nib in it. Uh, there were some questions both on my channel and on Fountain Pen Geeks or Fountain Pen Network, one of the two forums, about the falcon nibs versus the falcon pen. The I, I've never used a falcon pen, but I, this one, the falcon nib, is designed to be extra flexible. And in fact, I think Matt Armstrong mentioned it this week. And he knows more about fountain pens than I do. I am happy with the amount of flex I get from it. I have not filmed my review of this pen yet. So uh, consider this a preview of things to come. Not bad. You know, nothing like my truly flex pens like the Centro Pen or the Waterman's 52, but 
you know, look at that. Nice line variation. As uh, somebody mentioned with the Pilot Classic, you don't want to torture your nibs to see how much flex you can get out of them. They have a limit. And when they get past the limit, the tines go eep, and you're done. Of course, I always, always, always have my Lamy 2000 inked up with black. This is my beloved Daily Writer pen. Now, we're going to get to a couple surprises, a whole string of them. I have inked up a Pelican Twist. Check out the twist action on that. Yes, it's a little bit odd shaped. The grip section is a bit oddly shaped, but it's a children's pen. It's designed you know, to teach the kids how to grip a pen. Uh, the ink I have in it is just the unexciting Pelican Blue cartridge that came with it. Let's see if I can... Yeah, here we, here we go. Not a very exciting color, but it is what it is. I have inked up a uh, pen I wouldn't have expected to buy. I basically, it's because another pen I found was way cheaper than expected. This was a Faber-Castell Ondoro. I have never used a Faber-Castell. I think I've used their pencils before, their ordinary wood pencils, but never a fountain pen. So attractive in its own way, definitely unique. I, I kind of like the pencil color. See, I said I like their pencils, sort of. Not my favorite brand of pencil, but not bad. And it has a fine nib. And the ink is kind of fun because this Mandarin ink, this is the color it is. You know, today is November 18th, so after six days, it does not go on that color. So part of the fun of Iron Gall inks. All right. And then here's the star. I been pretty good about buying pens but uh, I couldn't resist this is what I bought now I had mentioned this in one of my driving videos and it was way outside my range so I said nope not gonna happen but I bought it at a different retailer at a much lower cost and I have to say I'm impressed I haven't liked a lot of their finishes like they have the Fortuna mule and I just think ugh. I mean, it's copper. I like copper, but something about it just wasn't for me at all. But this finish is gorgeous. It's the exact same pen. It just has a you know, this turquoise finish instead. And I have it inked up with tur Iron Gall Turquoise Ink, the KWZ. And it's a broad, but I have to say, Montegrappa, this broad is a little bit narrower than the typical Western broad. And I actually like that because I like my Japanese broad, so... Hey, good match. I, I'm impressed. Th this pen is one, uh, I was. I knew I would like its looks. Well, I like writing with it. In fact, uh, I'm about to do my third fill on it. I haven't even done the review yet. So, I have one more pen here. It's not inked up. I just stopped at the post office, uh, actually, and I also went to the hardware store and picked up that light bulb. I uh, stopped at the post office. This is, this pen is Norwegian. I know absolutely nothing about it. I haven't even inked it up. I haven't even figured out how to ink it up. Uh, this is a pan, pan. I'm not sure how to speak Norwegian, but it's a Norwegian fountain pen. <clears throat> so I'll just show you its nib. I don't know. It seems to have a little bounce to it, but I'm not going to push it till I know more about it. So screw cap. It's actually kind of a brown color, but I can see in the video it doesn't look brown. And then it has a blind cap revealing a push button. But when I push on the button, nothing happens. So I need to figure that out. Uh, I, I've got the feeling that there's some kind of a mechanism that holds it in because some of those push button fillers were like that. So I will get that worked out. And down the road, I don't know when, you'll see that one. But I thought I would include this because uh, viewer Ove Bjornsson and I did a little trade. He traded me this pen, and I traded him a Noodler's Conrad with a couple of nibs. Um, you know, looking at this pen, I feel like I came out ahead on this deal, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I haven't written with this pen yet, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if I even like it. I like its looks. It's very plain, but I'm okay with that, especially with a vintage pen. So, anyway, that's what's in use, and I'm hoping... With you seeing what I'm using, and me seeing what I'm using, and especially having a record of what I'm using, just get an idea, you know, 
when I review a pen, I've usually owned it for a while, especially that Twisby I've owned for a few years. But I, uh, time tells if I really like the pen, if I really continue using it. I like the uh, Platinum Shoji. I didn't realize I liked it until I realized that, hey, this pen is always inked up. What's the deal with a pen I don't like? And then figured out that, yeah, that's actually a good pen. So educational to me, educational to you. And uh, next week, not sure what I'm going to do. It's Thanksgiving Day. I will probably upload a video Wednesday night anyway, but you know, don't spend Thanksgiving watching me on YouTube. I'm go not going to be on the computer. You shouldn't be on the computer. Get out and meet real people. So, uh, I, it's a little early, but I bid you a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.